Hello, and welcome to this May 10th virtual worship service of Tyner United Methodist Church. My name is David Hill, and I'm glad you were able to join us. Happy Mother's Day. Also, thanks to those of you who suggested we try this in the chapel. We were able to get some additional lighting, and we think this might work. Let us know what you think. Now let us pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of life and for the mothers whom you commissioned to help give us that gift. We ask that you bless all those joining this virtual service who exhibit the love of a mother. Help us to remember that even though our mothers first showed us love, you were the source of all love and you loved us before our mothers knew us. Help us to remember that even though our mothers want what's best for us, you want us to have the joy, power, peace, and eternal life that only you can offer. And you offer us these gifts by your grace. Bless this service and all who participate in it. Let us feel the presence of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who trust in him. And now Pastor Ty will bring the sermon, the title of which is The Love of God in Everyday Moments. Well, again, I want to express my thanks and my gratitude to David as our lay leader for opening our virtual worship services and um, leading us in prayer. And for Josh as he records these. And for all those others who contribute from time to time, whether it's through music or um, uh, a skit, uh, we appreciate everyone for participating and for you for uh, joining us in our virtual worship experience. Today, being Mother's Day, uh, what a better way to celebrate our mothers than to think of, of this from Psalm 34, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in Him. That's a well-known phrase. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It's interesting that King David, who wrote this, was known as a man after God's own heart. But it's interesting also that that this is recorded, Psalm 34, as he recounts a time in his life when he was fleeing from Saul. A time in which in 1 Samuel 21, verses 10 through 15, he even acts insane um, as he's to avoid being recognized um, in his fleeing from Saul and going into the area of the Philistines and the community of Gath. Be that as it may, in our daily lives, we all make mistakes. We struggle with the status quo. We endure unfair hardships, as did David, and stretch to understand our purpose in life in the midst of the turmoil that we're experiencing. When the great, the great king wrote, taste and see that the Lord is good, he was expressing his utmost devotion to the to and for the love of God and the unexplainable depths of God's compassion. He is good, for he makes all those who trust in him truly blessed. Let us therefore be so convinced of his goodness as thereby to be encouraged in the worst of times to trust him said Matthew Henry in his Bible commentary. Undoubtedly, we are in some trying times now, be it uh, in our safe distancing and self-quarantining at home, or be it as um, victims of the recent tornadoes in our area. But we can still, in the midst of these difficult times, we can truly say that we are blessed. We are truly blessed by God and we are convinced of His goodness as He carries us, through, carries us through these difficult times. But have you ever stopped to think about what it really means, the biblical meaning of tasting and seeing 
that the Lord is good. The verse, the first seven verses of this Psalm 34, praise God for answered prayer. But it pivots in this eighth verse to sound more like a wise, instructive proverb of sorts. The original Hebrew translation explains taste, meaning more than just to eat, but to perceive. In other words, seeing also means more than just observing what passes across our line of sight, but to perceive and envision, to look after and to learn about, to consider and to discern. Taste and see is to try and experience. A culmination of what we know and experience in our relationship with God allows us to see His good blessings in our lives and thus acknowledge that we are truly blessed no matter what the circumstances around us. I don't believe that we can fully comprehend this phrase, taste and see that the Lord is good, without the second part of the verse, as well as the fuller context of Psalm 34. The NIV Study Bible defines blessed in this context as the happy condition of those who revere the Lord, do His will, and put their trust in Him. Reference is not first of all to health and wealth, but to the assurance of living under the guardianship and faithful care of our gracious Lord, the gracious Lord of life. The Hebrew root of blessed in this verse talks about making progress, of moving forward, walking or advancing, and being led onward as well as being made happy or blessed. Though in a state of fear and scrambling, David somehow managed to compose an intricately structured song called an acrostic, beginning each line in the Hebrew alphabetical order. Taste, from Psalm 34, 8, uses the same Hebrew root for pretending to be insane, as is seen in 1 Samuel 21, 13. We must taste that He is a bountiful benefactor. Relish the goodness of God in all His gifts to us and reckon that savor and sweetness of them. Let God's goodness be rolled under the tongue as a sweet morsel. These words again from Matthew Henry of the Henry Commentary. Now in reading this, I want to uh, take the bridge to that of of motherhood and the those mothers that we honor today and those people who have a motherly love though they may not have um, have children of their own and I read from first John in chapter 5 verses 1 through 6 it says everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone who li- loves the father loves his child as well This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out His commands. This is love for God to obey His commands. And His commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Of God. Mothers are, godly mothers are, are those that we so often take for granted who have learned that they are blessed no matter what trials and tri-
tribulations they are experiencing, they are blessed and they are blessed to be a blessing to others. And we are benefactors of, of that blessing. I have had the, and continue to have the great blessing of many mother figures in my life from grandmothers to my own mother, to Kim's mother, to Kim who is a mother, and to many mothers within the congregations that I have served who give of themselves sacrificially each and every day with a love, much like the love of Jesus Christ, modeled after the love of Jesus Christ, an unconditional love that is shared with us. I guess words are inadequate to express really how we feel about our mothers. And though we're rec recording this uh, on Wednesday, one of the reasons we're recording it this early in the week is because I'm going to be blessed this weekend to spend it with my mother. It has been 30 some years since I have been pastoring now for 30 years that I have actually been able to, this will be the first time in 30 some years that I will be able to be at home and spend Mother's Day with my mother. And I look forward to doing that as some of my siblings will also be present to celebrate that occasion with her. Now in saying this, I'm reminded that you and I, as we look at, at uh, the scripture that we've been looking at today, of tasting and seeing that God is good, that no matter where we are in life, no matter what responsibility, what profession that we are in, whether we are a student, whether we are a child, a toddler, whether we are a student in the school system, whether we are a professional, a business uh, individual, or whether we are one that, that is at home caring for our children and our loved ones, or maybe for our parents. I was reminded of, of this particular um, writing by Kent uh, um, Nearburn. And I want to read this because I think that he illustrates for us how no matter where we are in life, we can experience the love of God in everyday moments. We experience it through our, our mothers, certainly, and the motherly figures in our lives. But listen to this story. You may want to have some tissues close by as I read this. There was a time, it's called the cab ride I will never forget. There was a time in my life 20 years ago when I was driving a cab for a living. It was a cowboy's life, a gambler's life, a life for someone who wanted no boss, constant movement, and the thrill of a dice roll every time a new passenger got into the cab. What I didn't count on when I took the job was that it was also a ministry. Because I drove the night shift, my cab became a rolling confessional. Passengers would climb in, sit behind me in total anonymity, and tell me of their lives. We were like strangers on a train, the passengers, the passengers and I hurtling through the night, revealing intimacies we would never have dreamed of sharing during the brighter life of, light of day. I encountered people whose lives amazed me, ennobled ennobled me, made me laugh, and made me weep. And none of those lives touched me more than that of a woman I picked up late on a warm August night. I was responding to a call from a small brick fourplex in a quiet part of town. I assumed I was being sent to pick up some partiers or someone who had just had a fight with a lover or someone going off to an early shift at some factory for, from, uh, for the industrial part of town. When I arrived at the address, the building was dark except a single light in a ground floor window. Under these circumstances, many drivers would just honk once or twice, wait a short minute, and then drive away. Too many bad possibilities awaited a driver who went up to a darkened building at 2.30 in the morning. But I had seen too many people trapped in a life of poverty who depended upon the cab as their only means of transportation. Unless a situation had a real whiff of danger, I always went to the door to find the passenger. It might, I reasoned, be someone who needs my assistance, 
Would I not want a driver to do the same if my mother or father had called for a cab? So I walked to the door and I knocked. Just a minute, answered a frail and elderly voice. I could hear the sound of something being dragged across the floor. After a long pause, the door opened. A small woman, somewhere in her 80s, stood before me. She was wearing a print dress and a pillbox hat with a veil pinned on it, like you might see in a costume shop or a Goodwill store or in a 1940s movie. By her side was a small nylon suitcase. The sound had been her dragging it across the floor. The apartment looked as if no one had lived in it for years. All of the furniture was covered in sheets. There were no clocks on the walls, no knickknacks or utensils on the counters. In one corner was a cardboard box filled with photos and glassware. Would you carry my bag out to the car? She said, I'd like a few moments alone. Then if you could come back and help me, I'm not very strong. I took the suitcase to the cab, then returned to assist the woman. She took my arm and we walked slowly toward the curb. She kept thanking me for my kindness. It's nothing I told her. I just tried to treat my passengers the way I would want my mother treated. Oh, you're such a good boy, she said. Her praise and appreciation were almost embarrassing. When we got in the cab, she gave me an address, then asked, could you drive through downtown? It's not the shortest way, I answered. Oh, I don't mind, she said. I'm in no hurry. I'm on my way to a hospice. I looked in the rearview mirror. Her eyes were glistening. I don't have any family left, she continued. The, doctors say, the doctor says I should go there. He says I don't have very long. I quietly reached over and I shut off the meter. What route would you like for me to go? I asked. For the next two hours, we drove through the city. She showed me the building where she had once worked as an elevator operator. We drove through the neighborhood where she and her husband had lived when they had first been married. She had me pull up in front of a furniture warehouse that had once been a ballroom where she had gone dancing as a girl. Sometimes sometime she would have me slow in front of a particular building or corner and would sit staring into the darkness, saying nothing. As the first hint of sun was creasing the horizon, she suddenly said, I'm tired, let's go now. We drove in silence to the address she had given me. It was a low building, like a small convalescent home with a driveway that passed under a portico. Two orderlies came out to the cab as soon as we pulled up. Without waiting for me, they opened the door and began assisting the woman. They were solicitous and intent, watching her every move. They must have been expecting her. Perhaps she had phoned them right before we left. I opened the trunk and took a small suitcase up to the door. The woman was already seated in a wheelchair. How much do I owe you, she asked, reaching into her purse. Nothing, I said. You have to make a living, she answered. There are other passengers, I responded. Almost without thinking, I bent and gave her a hug. She held on to me tightly. You gave an old woman a little moment of joy, she said. Thank you. There was nothing more to say. I squeezed her hand once, then walked out into the dim morning light. Behind me, I could hear the door shut. It was the sound of the closing of a life. I did not pick up any more passengers that shift. I drove aimlessly, lost in thought, for the remainder of that day. I could hardly talk. What if that woman had gotten an angry driver, or one who was impatient to end a shift? What if I had refused to take the run, or had honked once and then driven away? What if I had been a foul, in a foul mood and had refused to engage the woman in conversation? 
How many other moments like that had I missed or failed to grasp? We are so conditioned to think that our lives resolve, revolve around great moments. But great moments often catch us unawares. When that woman hugged me and said that I had brought her a moment of joy, it was possible to believe that I had been placed on earth for the sole purpose of providing her with that last ride. I do not think that I have ever done anything in my life that was any more important. I end this message with that poignant story because it reminds us that God's love is present in everyday moments of life. At times when we least expect, we can experience God's love and we can be agents of sharing God's love. Much in the same way mothers down through the years have shared God's love with us. May we be sensitive to look at the moments in everyday life and share the love of Christ with others. Would you bow with me for a moment? God, it is in the everyday moments of life that you share your love with us. Today we are reminded of how you share your love with us through mothers, through people who have motherly uh, characteristics, traits, and instincts. We give you thanks for those mothers who have so impressed our lives, influenced us for the good. We give you thanks for the mothers who have taken uh, what could be seen as the mundaneness of life and made it exciting for their children. They've taken the mundane happenings of life and treasured them and made them special by sharing your love with us. Lord, may we not take this for granted. May we also be agents of your love. May we, like um, the author of, of this article, the cab driver here, that um, may we too be sensitive and every day be aware of how we respond to people and how we act, that we are representing Christ to others. And we don't know what others are experiencing, we could be very curt and cut people off and being in a bad attitude. And yet, we could respond in a manner of kindness and godliness. Lord, help us to be ever mindful of how we present you to others. May we cherish each and every moment Let's not look for the mountaintop experiences in which to experience you, but let us experience you in the everyday happenings of life. Lord, we love you. It's my prayer that we, each and every one, <clears throat> will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, accept you as our personal Lord and Savior, and live for you triumphantly throughout this life until we at last, the door shuts on our life and we are transferred uh, to the church triumphant. Lord, we give you thanks and praise in the majestic and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you on this Mother's Day and go forth with the peace of Christ Jesus. Amen.